I'm predicting that Jarquez Hunter will have a career day against Vanderbilt. You are Locked On Auburn, your daily podcast on the Auburn Tigers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Yes, welcome on into Locked On Auburn, your daily Auburn Tigers podcast. I'm your host, Zach Blackerby, and thank you so much for making Locked On Auburn your first listen every single day. Joining me, as he does every Friday, Daryl Dapper, Montgomery Radio veteran, hanging out as we dap it up on a Friday. Daryl, the more I think about what's going to happen between Auburn and Vanderbilt, the more I think about Jarquez Hunter, Jarquez Hunter, and more Jarquez Hunter. I think Auburn's going to run the football. I think they'll still have passes downfield. I think they'll still have RPO and, and have a balanced offense. But I think Jarquez Hunter could have a career day against the Vanderbilt Commodores on Saturday. Yeah, I agree. I think that he's getting healthy. I mean, he's hitting that stride. So it's not just a matter of what Vanderbilt would do defensively and what Auburn would try to do from a schematic standpoint. Jarquez Hunter looks healthy, looks as good as he's looked in a couple of years. He's hitting the holes. He's got bursts, a ton of bursts. So I think that in itself is very encouraging and lends to him having a big game Saturday. The other thing I would look for is if me and you were talking about this and we're kind of predicting this, you would have to think Clark Lee and Vanderbilt staff is expecting the same thing, a heavy dose yeah. of Jarquez Hunter. So can Auburn still be successful if they load up and key on him? Yes, but look for Peyton Thorne probably to have a nice day running the football too. If Vanderbilt's defensive staff is thinking like you and I are and tries to sell out on the RPO to Hunter and think about what Thorne can do if he keeps it. When three or four dudes crash Hunter, he'd have a lot of running lanes. So that's something that I'm pretty excited about because I anticipate like you, he'll have a big game, but you got to think Vanderbilt's defensive staff thinks the same thing. Yeah, Vanderbilt has not been able to stop a lot of folks this year. I mean, that that is certainly the weakness of their team. It's not unusual for them to give up 40 points in a contest so far this season. And I don't expect that to change. I don't think Auburn's going to score 40 points, but I do think Auburn will be able to move the football consistently against Vanderbilt. A stat popped up on social media uh, yesterday, Daryl, that a lot of Auburn fans are cling clinging to. CFB Film Room is the account that tweeted it. But yards before contact, the highest rate of running backs gaining three or more yards before contact versus FBS opponent. And he puts the top six teams on there. Oregon, Kansas, Miami, Oregon State, USC. Then Auburn is sixth. 37.3% of the time, an Auburn running back is gaining three yards or more before he is being touched by a defender. And to me, that's a huge deal. A huge deal, especially when you look at who Auburn has played so far this season. I mean, Auburn has played the brutal part of their schedule. That is now behind them. I think that rate only gets better because also, let's think about this, a big part of that was also before Auburn really found its identity in the running game, Daryl. And I just think on the road, this coaching staff knows Peyton Thorne hasn't been good away from Jordan-Hare Stadium. So what do you do? You give it to Jarquez Hunter over and over and over again until Peyton Thorne seems comfortable. That's that's my prediction for what we're going to see tomorrow. Cause and effect on that stat. If we dig a little deeper, pretty interesting. Number one, first of all, you know, great. Uh, all the accolades to Coach Thornton and this offensive line. Because yes. for perspective, last year, Auburn was like 111th. And Higby <laughs> was, get ready, 0. 0.42, 0. 0.42 yards per carry before contact, meaning he didn't even get a yard. Now, let me say this. There are three things that have changed. The offensive line coach, the offensive line, and I love Tank Bigsby. But his running style sometimes lent itself to get hit before getting back to the line of scrimmage. He was very deliberate. It was and then once he broke initial contain, but I, a lot of people would go, look at the way Jarquez Hunter hits the hole last year, and Tank is so deliberate. So that might lend some of that because that stat yeah. was Tank Bigsby. But that being said, it is a huge advantage, huge advantage 
to get four yards before or almost four yards before contact because you're in second and six. I mean, you know, it, it's big when you think about it at the worst case scenario. So I love that stat. I, I think the quarterback position, too, from an RPO standpoint, could really benefit from that. Again, sure. this popped yesterday on social media. Vanderbilt has people that keeps an eye on social media. They know that. They've scouted this Auburn team. They know how successful they are before contact, you know, yards before contact. Again, I think it lends itself to selling out to stop Hunter because it says running backs. I don't know, you know, quarterbacks don't in there or not. Second thing, though, imagine if they do that and it gets pulled, the receivers in the open space you would have behind that initial line of containment with people crashing the line of scrimmage on Jarquez Hunter. Auburn should have guys running free in the secondary tomorrow if if this all plays out. It, not only Hunter should, should eat and Thorne should eat, I just hope Auburn's not stubborn from an offensive game plan standpoint and just say, I'm going to give it to Hunter 30 times. If, there, if there's stuff to be had from them crashing, they need to take advantage of it. Yeah, and – I'm a little more okay. 30 is ridiculous, right? But if, if Jarquez gets closer to 20, I'm more okay with it than than in other situations just because Damari's still, you know, having his return back. And it seems like Jeremiah Cobb, you know, is going to play third or fourth fiddle depending on the game plan. I'm, I'm okay with Jarquez Hunter getting the ball 20 times, especially if you mix it up a little bit, 17-ish runs, three-ish passes out of the backfield. I think that's great. I think it's great. He had 16 last week, I believe. And, you know, it, it, the the 50-yard run at the end of it changes things, right? That changed kind of the perception of what his averages were, but the 50-yard run happened. Like, you can't take that away from him. And, and I just think he's going to be able to do a lot on 15-ish touches against this Vanderbilt defense. I, I just don't think a lot of this Vanderbilt team, I know Hugh Freeze has struggled playing and coaching there in the past. I'm not seeing the game develop that way on Saturday, Daryl. I'm just not because I, I, I don't think they're going to be able to stop Auburn's running attack. I also think that there's going to be balance. I know you want to go run heavy, and I agree. And look, we are way past the days. My fear would be Hugh Freeze doesn't seem to be this type of of coach from a game plan standpoint. You remember the days where Carry on Johnson and Trey Mason, they ran them till the wheels came off. Sure. And I, you know, I, I want Hunter to stay fresh. We've got some big games. We've got some great backs, Batty and Cobb and Alston. I agree with you. 15 to 20 care, 15 to 20 touches, but let Cobb and somebody and let the quarterback keep it some. But also I would love to see Auburn throw it 20 times. I mean, get, you know, not go crazy and go air raid, but throw it 20 times, get those receivers behind the initial defensive tackles and defensive ends crashing to stop the running game and see what happens. Especially, look, that play that has kind of emerged would be beautiful for this scenario where Thorne fakes the handoff, rolls to the right, and there's Fairweather with a drag. Remember, we sure. ran that two or three times. Hunter with the screen. I think those type of plays – could really set up well for Auburn if Vanderbilt sells out to stop the run. Shockingly little action in the screen game so far this I year. And I mean, we've been screaming for it. They threw it. That we've been we, we the Friday show last week. We said please throw some screens, and they do. And remember how big it was because it set Auburn up at the end of the first half for its third touchdown. That's the yeah. one where Hunter, you know, hurdled somebody, but it was wide open. I mean, there was 10, 15 yards before there was even somebody around. So I'd love to see that in the fair weather drag where he comes on the backside about seven yards across the middle. I think it'll be there, especially behind defensive ends and linebackers that are probably going to cheat up. Mm -hmm. I would suspect they're going to cheat up to crash the run. So yeah, that's, that's, that's how I would defend Auburn if I was a yeah. defensive coordinator. No question. Yep. No question about it. So we think a lot could go well for Auburn on Saturday. What if it doesn't? What's the worst case scenario for Auburn on Saturday? We discuss in just a moment right here on Locked on Auburn. Today's show is brought to you by Game Time. Game Time is the best place for last minute tickets. And look, if you're listening to this Friday morning and you're fired up and you're like, I want to see Jarquez Hunter potentially have a career day. Nashville's not that far away. Download the Game Time app. The app itself is free. 
When you sign up for a free account, use code Locked On College. You'll get twenty dollars in credits, twenty dollars off your first ticket purchase. You don't have to worry about prices or anything like that. It's the best. Game Time will have the best prices for you. Don't even worry about that. So download the Game Time app, create an account, use code Locked On College for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create the account, use code Locked On College for twenty dollars off. Game Time last minute tickets, lowest prices guaranteed. Teed. Today's show also brought to you by our friends at Auburn Med Aesthetic. Guys, we've been there as the day of or the day before your anniversary or her birthday or, or some event where you need to buy her something special. And the best thing you could do, go to AuburnMedAesthetics.com and get a gift card for Botox, facials, laser treatment, whatever it may be. She's going to show up and she is going to be blown away by the service that Auburn Metastetic can offer with Dr. Nancy Herring and her master esthetician, Circe Kelly. They've got a ton of experience in the med spa industry. And hey, guys, if you want some Brotox, they do that too. They do that too. Just saying. So go, uh, go to Auburn Metastetics, uh, the full service med spa serving Auburn, Opelika, and Lee County gift card purchases. Very easy at Auburn Metastetics. Dot com. Remember, it's perfect for the last minute gift cards, guys. We promise that she will love it. Daryl Daprich, our guest, as we're dapping it up on a Friday. Worst case scenario. And, and look, uh, other shows have talked about this. I've been very positive this week, Daryl. I feel very confident about Auburn's situation mm -hmm. going into Saturday's battle with Vanderbilt, but it could go south. And I think what Auburn needs to avoid, and I'm curious to see if you'll agree or not. But I think the worst case scenario is Auburn goes out there, they get the jitters or whatever it is what that they get early in games when they go away from Jordan Hare Stadium. In the first two or three drives, it looks like the game hasn't started yet, and they don't know what's going on. They don't seem prepared. And they don't seem ready. I mean, we've seen that at Cal, we saw that at LSU, we saw it at Texas A&M to an extent, not quite as bad as the other two, but it just didn't look good. And so I think the worst case scenario is that happens for the first two or three drives on Saturday in Nashville against Vanderbilt, a very tame crowd. There may be more orange and blue folks there than, than Vandy fans. And then Vandy pops a big play or two, and all of a sudden you're in a hole. I, I think that is the absolute worst case scenario for the Auburn Tigers. To me, the worst case scenario is Auburn coming out and playing like they did against Cal mm -hmm. on the road against an inferior opponent and just being flat, being discombobulated, just not being in rhythm, turning it over on a drive or two, going three and out the first two or three, and then it gives Vanderbilt life, belief that, oh, we can hang because Cal hung. And the worst case scenario would be Auburn playing that type of game and just not waking up in time to overcome that. Because, look, the Vanderbilt narrative – when Vanderbilt has given Auburn problems historically, go back and look, it, they've made it an ugly game. Yeah. They've, they've mucked it up a little bit, and those games are really low-scoring games, the 17-13s. When Auburn breaks 24-27 against Vanderbilt, typically they have no problem with sure. it. Um, and so that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for Auburn to kind of similarly do what they did at home against Mississippi State to flip that worst-case scenario and, and do something on that first drive get points, even if it's a field goal, mm. kind of set the tone and then just kind of roll from there. Worst case scenario would be just playing like they were again, like they did against Cal and just not waking up. And of course that would be brutal because this is one of those that you have circled that, you know, we all do that Auburn should and it should win and we have them winning. Yeah. Yeah. I, I do think Auburn wins. We'll get into the specifics of that in our next segment, but I'm with you because even on, Vandy, like when Vandy has the ball, their quarterback, it, it, this isn't their full-time starter. Walt Taylor, I believe is his name. And well, they're going two-quarterback system against Auburn. They're playing two quarterbacks, not Swan, who's the starter. Wow. With Taylor and Seals. is Seal or Seals is his name. So, yeah, they're going the, – all indications I've read reports, they're going a two-quarterback system. We all know how well that works. Um, and well, so – yeah, oh, works, great, do it. It's effective. But they're doing that, so their starter's not supposed to play. He's been out since the end of September. I do believe Cal had a better running attack 
than Vanderbilt and a better offense. No than question. Did. I don't think it's close. So, so that's where you may not be as much in trouble, even if you come out flat, because I don't know if Vanderbilt can score consistently on Auburn. Cal could with that running attack. Um, but again, get out in front because their offense, like Mississippi State's, is not built to come from behind. Yeah, I think this first quarter is going to be so big for both teams because I think the bulk of Vandy's points will need to come from like the scripted part of the game, which is your first and your second quarter, or first and your third quarters, those first one or two drives, depending on how much they prep. And, and to me, if this Auburn defense can kind of withstand that first wave, I think they're fine. I, I, I just don't see Vandy being as capable. And, and I've seen a bunch of places this week that have said, well, Vandy can score on people. I'm like, eh, kinda. I mean, it, the quarterback situation's different. And also, like, in conference play, they haven't. Like, we talked about it a ton a few weeks ago about how unimpressive Ole Miss's defense was. And they scored once. They scored once against Ole Miss. Like, and obviously, Ole Miss, I think, is, I think their defense is better than their stats because LSU put up so much on them. I think it skews it a little bit. They're but quick. Still. They're so fast. They fly around. They're, yeah. Ole Miss is very quick defensively, has a lot of speed, team speed. Sure. And and so I, I just I'm not buying the whole Vandy can score on you argument as much as some people are. And that's just my opinion. I could be totally wrong tomorrow. That's why we're talking about worst case scenario for Saturday. And I think that's part of it. But I just, you know, I'm gonna be honest, I have a hard time seeing that happen. Do you feel like Vanderbilt's defense? I, you know, I, I pulled up stats and I looked at stats and SEC stats, and sometimes stats don't tell the whole story. Sure. Then I went back and watched some, you know, just highlights, some things. Do you think Mississippi State's defense is better than Vanderbilt's? Yes. Yeah, I do too. I do too. So that that comes into play as well. I think their and offense is better too. Yeah, and Mississippi State. Yeah, exactly. And Mississippi State did some good things adjusting in the second half. They made that defense even look better. But yeah, so I I think that's why Auburn could even have a little bit better offensive day than they did against Mississippi State. More consistent, that's for sure. I think four quarters work. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. All right, what are our predictions? What do we think specifically will happen on Saturday? We discuss in just a moment right here on Locked on Auburn. Today's show is brought to you by our friends at Prize Picks. Prize Picks is the best way to play daily fantasy sports. Instead of battling against thousands of other players, including pros and sharks, you just pick more or less than on two to six player stat projections and you watch the winnings roll in. You can cross sports, right? So you could do, you know, a quarterback's passing yards and then maybe a point guard's assist total, depending on, you know, if you're if if we're in season, how many games there are that night. But there's a ton of different ways to play. Prize picks is is my favorite way to play fantasy sports. And look, if you're like me and your fantasy team stinks, uh, prize picks is a way to kind of um reignite that fire each and every weekend, which is uh which is a ton of fun. So Head over to prizepicks.com slash locked on college and use code locked on college for a first deposit match of up to $100. That's prizepicks.com slash locked on college and use code locked on college for a first deposit match up to $100. It is, um, it is daily fantasy sports made easy. Love our friends at prize picks. Today's show is also brought to you by our friends at Eddie's Cal Zones. Located at 130 North College Street in downtown Auburn. It's across from the new Target. You can't miss it. There's nothing like Eddie's. They have specialty calzones, extra crispy wings. They've got sides like loaded curly fries and tots. And it's proven the coldest beer in town. So whether it's game day weekend at home or like this weekend on the road, Eddie's is the place to be and the place to hit up at any time of day because um, they've got all of this great food. So they're delivering and open until 4 a.m. So if the game's over, you're home, and you don't want to leave anymore, hit up Eddie's. They've got you covered. And uh, you can check out everything um, at their website at eddiescalzonesauburn.com or call them 334-329-5111. Eddie's Calzones, wings, and beer opening. Uh, they're open and delivering until 4 a.m. Daryl Daprich, our guest on this Friday. Prediction time. I have Auburn winning this game 27 to 10. Daryl, I, I think they jump out early. I think it's a relatively boring second half. 
And I think both teams kind of get a few touchdowns maybe in the third and fourth quarter to, to make it um, to make it where Auburn's in the high 20s, low 30s, and uh, Vandy's in the high single digits, low teens. That's, that's just kind of my gut feeling on this one. Yeah, I also have Auburn uh, scoring 27. I have Auburn scoring 27. I have Vanderbilt scoring nine, uh, three field goals. So 27-9 Auburn is what I feel. I, I For the longest time, I felt 31-13. That kept just popping in my head. Okay. But I just think from an offensive standpoint from Vanderbilt with rotating quarterbacks and all that, I'm going to go 27-9. to nine. Yeah. Do you – what do you think is more likely – Auburn breaks 30 or Vandy breaks 20? Oh, Auburn breaking 30. In fact, even though, I mean, even though they haven't done it this year? Yeah. I mean, uh, yeah. I mean, I think that should have last Saturday. I mean, let's yeah, be honest. Right. I mean, they were on the 15 yard line and took a knee at the end of the game. Good but point. yeah, they, I think they will. I think they, I think they break 30. I, I think they could. I mean, even though I predict him. With 27, I think they very, very much could break 30. So as somebody who covers Auburn, and you'll be at the game covering, so you may not be able to do this as much, but how much attention are you going to be paying attention to? Um, I worded that weird. I'm sorry. But how closely are you going to be following Arkansas and Florida this weekend? Because I think that's a really fascinating situation because Auburn then obviously goes to Fayetteville next weekend. And I just think that's a team that's uh, – I think their feelings are hurt a little bit. I think things are going a way that they don't think. And that's a game that a lot of people had as a toss-up going into the season. I guess it's still technically a toss-up now. But I think what happens in that Arkansas-Florida game is very important to Auburn because of next week. That's a great point. It, I'm going to be very paying very close attention to it because it could be one of those spirit breakers, right? We just got done with Halloween – little spirits action, a little spirit breaker. If Arkansas, Has Arkansas given up? I mean, we may learn that tomorrow. That's what I'm saying. If they get boat raced by Florida, it may absolutely take their soul. It, it may, they may get Beetlejuiced. And if that happens, then what What are they going to do when they play all – I mean, the, it's almost like you're just flat, you're, you're emotionless. On the flip side, if they were to upset Florida – Watch out the following Saturday. That Good game point. will scare the living bejesus out of me. Good point. And in fact, I would say if they beat Vanderbilt and Arkansas, I mean, if they beat if they beat Florida and Auburn beats Vanderbilt two scores, Arkansas should be favored the following week against Auburn if they were to beat Florida. So be careful how that game plays out. I think it takes their will somewhat if if Florida beats them and beats them handily. But remember, Arkansas has been in most every game they've played. They really haven't gotten blown out. They've been there, and it's been frustrating that they've been you know, on the verge. And so that could still happen against Florida. One score game, Does that is that demoralizing? Here we go again. We were right there, and we couldn't get it done. Because then that bleeds and leaks into the following Saturday if it's a one score game against Auburn. There's a lot, I think, that can kind of tell the tale with that Arkansas-Florida game. Yeah, Arkansas, I mean, they also seem to be moved on to basketball, too. So, like, how bought in is the fan base at that point? So, yeah. th th they opened as a six-and-a-half-point favorite. Florida did, according to our friends at FanDuel Sportsbook. They've dropped to five-and-a-half, so they're betting it down just a little bit. But, I, yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I can't wait to watch that game, actually. Like, I, I'm almost as excited about that game. They play at 11 Central Time, so you'll be able to watch that and then go right into – Auburn Vandy, but that's um, I mean, we've got a great weekend of football. There's a bunch of other SEC games going on too, and we're arguably talking about the 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 two um, the two that'll probably get the least amount of eyeballs. But it's just it's important to Auburn, right? So um, I, I think let me ask you this. Let me mm -hmm. ask you this. Kind of maybe our last topic for the day. Robbie had two snaps last week. What would you set the over under if you worked at FanDuel Sportsbook? What would you set the over under at for total snaps played for Robbie on Saturday? Five. Okay. Interesting. Because I wonder if God, I've got to be so careful how I, how I word this. I wonder if there was any blowback, not locker room, but guys that really feel like he's paid his dues and other players and teammates of you, maybe coach freeze, maybe looking at that and going, mm, I should have gotten him a couple more carries in hindsight. I didn't let me get him a few more. 
uh, Saturday, and maybe the game dictates. Maybe Vanderbilt's defense is a little bit different, like like we talked about. They're so susceptible against the run, and if they're overplaying Jarquez Hunter, if you get in the red zone, who better to have in there at the 15-yard line to pull it if they're overplaying Jarquez Hunter than Robbie? So as the game goes out and dictates, it may be he gets put in more situations. Because remember, Auburn scored not in the red zone both to the first two touchdowns. They never even got in the red zone to let it be red zone, Robbie. They were long touchdown passes, right? And the, the third touchdown was a two-minute drill situation. Which is what you want. Right. Yeah, you want Thorne in there. So he never really got that opportunity inside the red zone to do his right. thing. He may against Vanderbilt. So that's why I think he probably has more snaps. Another scenario is Peyton's on the road again and, you know, slow start, right? Which – I think we're past that. I hope we're past that. I mean, until we well, do this it, is right? the game to get past that because he's coming off his best performance. You stack them, and then you come out with all the confidence in the world and not looking over your shoulder. Yeah. And put that crap and that narrative to bed. It's up to him to do it. Just Only put, he just have a solid game. That's don't right. have a you know, you don't even need you don't you don't need a, you just have a solid game, a gr a good game on the road, and I think that kind of puts that to bed. All right, so I'm saying 27-10. You said 31-9. Is that right? I said 27-9. 27-9. So we're both on the yeah, we're close. Yeah, we're we are close. close. Yeah, we are close. We are close. Hey, I, I would take either one of those. Daryl, how can people check out everything you've got going on, buddy? I want to take one moment, if you just let me uh, divert a little bit, uh, over my right shoulder for the last month. And this has to do with Auburn and an AL.com article that came out today. For those that don't know, a good friend of mine, a good friend of our family, Todd Romanowski, he lost his son to a car accident last June. And Will was a sophomore at Auburn. He was a baseball analytics guy for the Auburn baseball team. He did stats. Big baseball guy. Loved Auburn. Eugene Asante started wearing a bracelet that said, be better than yesterday. And the origin of that story is his sister found a post-it note the day after he passed away in his room that said, be better than yesterday. And now Auburn's football team is kind of taking on that mantra. And, and you know, he's got bracelets and the stuff. I heard the family got to meet Eugene Asante. So it's a great article. AL.com did it. Um, also the advertiser. But I know the family personally have known them for 25 years, for a long time, for 20 years. So to honor him, you know, people need to remember that. It's a great mantra to have, be better than yesterday. And, uh, you know, we want to honor Will and just remember him in a special yep. way. Yep, absolutely. But you can follow me on DAP 6410. Uh, as as you mentioned, I'll be at, in Nashville tomorrow covering the game. We'll do that right after the game when I get back to the hotel. And then Monday mornings and Tuesday afternoons on various shows on the Auburn Network. Yeah, and if you're tuning in, you're like, how did you not talk about the decommitment of Jamarian Burnett? That show is already up, so be sure to check that out both on YouTube and whatever podcast feed you are on. And like Daryl said, we'll be back Sunday morning with the reaction show, hopefully covering an Auburn win against the Vanderbilt Commodores. You can read all of our written work at auburndaily.com, and we will see you Sunday morning. This has been Locked on Auburn.